In this video, I want to show you how to take spectral derivatives in NumPy. From theory, we know that the derivative of a function is given by first performing a Fourier transformation on it, then multiplying it with the imaginary unit and wave numbers, and then performing an inverse Fourier transformation. But how about the technicalities in code? Let's start by first defining the length of our domain, which I want to go from 0 to 1 as well as the number of degrees of freedom with which we want to discretize the function, which I want to set to 100. Then let us create the mesh of the domain, which is given by numpy.linspace from zero to L with 100 points. But we have to be careful. The prerequisite of taking spectral derivatives is that the function is periodic. And to represent a periodic boundary condition on a function, we ignore one of the boundary points in the mesh. So now the mesh would return points that are from 0 to L, including 0 and L. But we want to get rid of one of them, and we can do that by saying endpoint equals false. So this is one of the first important notes that the right boundary point is not included in the mesh. Then I have a very simple function that we want to differentiate, which is a function in X, and it shall be given as the sine of 4 times pi times x. Then let's evaluate the function at the mesh points and call this f underscore h by being f applied to mesh. And then we can plot the function with mesh and fh and give it the label, I want to say original. Let's also activate the legend in our plot. And here we see the function we get is a sine function with two periods and it's hardly noticeable but the very right point which would also lie at one is not included. So if we activate the crit here, this should be more visible in that the last point is not part of the mesh and that's very crucial. For this simple function, we can derive the analytical derivative by hand and say f prime is again a lambda in x and the derivative of sine of four pi x is four times pi times cosine of four times pi times x. Then we can also evaluate that by saying f prime h is f prime at mesh. And then we can also add it to our plot by saying plt.plot on mesh and f prime h and attach the label being the analytical or analytical derivative. And here we go. We see that the derivative has the function of a cosine. So instead of starting at zero, it starts at one, but it is also scaled with four pi. And that's because we have an inner derivative given by this coefficient that is part of what is applied here and here, because the sine is not on its natural domain from zero to two pi, but rather on the domain from zero to one. And that's causing the scaling here, but qualitatively, it looks like a cosine. And again, notice here the very right point at one is not included. So now let's take the spectral derivative f prime fft h and let's loosely translate what we have here. So we have the inverse Fourier transformation, which you can get by numpy fft dot iFFT applied to the imaginary unit, which can be represented by one times j in Python, multiplied with the wave number k, and then multiplied with numpy dot fft dot fft applied to fh, so the discretized version of our function. So how do we get these wave numbers? Conveniently, there is a function in NumPy to represent them by saying k is np dot fft dot fft frequencies. And then we have to hand over how many wave numbers we want to have. And this corresponds to n, so the number of points at which we discretized our function. And then this should run. And then we can plot the spectral derivative next to the other derivatives and have it at the last entry. So plt.plot mesh and then f prime fftH and we will attach the label spectral derivative. And here we go, we get a couple of points here. So first of all, we see that the spectral derivative is very small, so it's barely noticeable. So it seems that it is almost zero. And we also get a complex warning because the return type of an inverse Fourier transformation in general is a complex value and due to some numerical issues we have imaginary values that are unequal to zero so we can just get rid of them by calling dot real to extract the real value part so this should get rid of the error but we still have the problem with the spectral derivative not having the correct magnitude here 
So for this, let's take a look at the wave number creation, k here. And in this function, we not only get the option to set n, but also d, which is the spacing. So if we think about spacing, it would be reasonable to think about the delta x that we have in our mesh. So we took the domain from 0 to 1, and this could it into 100 points, excluding this very last one, so actually 101, but we discarded the very right one. So the spacing between the points could be this d that we're looking for. So let's try it, and let's say d is l divided by n. And then let's run it again. Okay, that's bringing us closer. So now we see that the derivative form of the spectral derivative is exactly a cosine. So it gets the qualitative shape right, but the amplitude is still off. And if you think about the difference here, so if you would measure it, it is approximately 6. And approximately 6 is approximately 2 times pi. So we are missing a factor of 2 times pi here. So we can represent that here as well by saying that d is l divided by n times 2 times pi. And finally, this should get us the correct derivative. So as you also see here, the values lie on top of each other. So we don't see the orange curve anymore, but we found the correct spectral derivative. So let me quickly summarize. We wanted to take the spectral derivative of the function sine of 4 pi x. For this, we discretized it on the corresponding domain, which ran from 0 to L. And importantly, the mesh representing the domain excludes one of the boundary points, so either the left or the right, but we chose the right one here. And then we got the spectral derivative by taking first the Fourier transformation on the discretized version of the function. So this was a vector of 100 values. We performed the Fourier transformation and then we got the corresponding 100 frequency amplitudes in Fourier space that we multiplied with the 100 wave numbers as well as the imaginary unit and then transformed it back. And then we saw that the spectral derivative matched the analytical one. But crucially for that, we had to get the right wave numbers. We used the function FFT frequencies, but had to provide the spacing, which was not only L divided by N, but L divided by N times 2 times pi. And just a general recommendation, this is the way of getting these frequencies or wave numbers in NumPy or with the corresponding fast Fourier transformation in NumPy. That can vary. And if you perform this particular test in a different environment with a different Fourier transformation implementation, you might need a different factor here. But you can always use this simple test with a function for which you have the analytical derivative to find out what kind of wave numbers you need. This channel is supported by Pasteur Labs and the Institute for Simulation Intelligence. Click the link in the video description to find out more how they merge machine learning and simulation in order to reimagine the scientific method. Also, a big thanks to all my Patreons. If you also want to support my vision of free education on advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. There is more content on fast Fourier transformation and also importantly, spectral and pseudospectral methods for partial differential equations, as well as their application in deep learning. If you're interested in that, then I hope to see you in one of the next videos.